ZW recently updated their electronic focuser lineup and they released the EAFN as well as the EAF Pro. Now the EAFN is a direct replacement for their old EAF focuser, um, except that it uses a USB-C cable. But the EAF Pro, which costs about $100 more than the basic EAFN model, does bring a couple of new features. So today I'm going to be testing the EAF Pro to see what new features it offers as well as how it performs in our cold Canadian winter nights for astrophotography. For the extra $100, you are getting a built-in battery, which allows completely standalone operation. You are getting physical buttons on the focuser, which allow you to manually focus without having to plug in the external remote or without having to use the software on your computer or ASI Air. And it also offers a Bluetooth connection so you can connect to it wirelessly using your ASI Air Plus or whatever other software you are using to control your equipment as long as it has Bluetooth. Now, one thing to remember is that not all ASI Air models have Bluetooth built in. The original ASI Air, the ASI Air Pro, or the ASI Air Mini do not have Bluetooth built in. So you'll need uh, the ASI Air Plus and at that, the newer model. Now, not all models of the ASI Air Plus have Bluetooth support. So to determine if your ASI Air can work with this uh, focuser wirelessly, uh, you can check the back of your ASI Air where it lists all of these details. Now, if you look at the back of your ASI Air and in front of the IC number, it has ASI Air Plus written there, then it will work uh, with uh, your ASI Air. Uh, whereas if your ASI Air model is like this, um, this older Plus model that I have, and in front of the RP number, it says RP IC M4, then it doesn't have Bluetooth support and you won't be able to wirelessly connect to the EAF Pro with your ASI Air model, but you can still control it with a cable and you can still use the buttons for manual focusing if you need. And of course, if you're planning to use your EAF Pro with the Schmidt Cassegrain telescope, you will have to buy that optional bracket because by default, uh, the bracket that comes with the EAFs uh, works well for refractors and any kind of telescope that has an external focuser, but it won't work with the Schmidt Cassegrain out of the box. So if you get the EAF Pro and you plan to use it plugged in using a cable instead of, uh, you know, using the built-in battery or over Bluetooth, then remember to leave the power button in the off position so you're not draining your battery while using it with a cable. Now to charge the EAF Pro, you can use a regular USB-C cable and any sort of uh, cell phone adapter or laptop or anything like that. Uh, using a standard 5 volt 2 amp charger, it takes about three hours to charge it fully uh, to 100%. And it's rated for use all the way down to about minus 10 degrees Celsius or 14 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's about the limit of, of uh, my ability to image. If it's colder than about minus 10, I usually don't do astrophotography. Now, during my testing, the ambient temperature was around minus 2 degrees Celsius or 28 degrees Fahrenheit, and it dropped down to minus 11 degrees Celsius uh, by the time I stopped imaging in the morning, which is about 12 degrees Fahrenheit. So it was a very cold Canadian winter night and I was refocusing every two hours or so. When I started imaging, the battery level on the EAF Pro was at 81% because I had been testing it during the day as well. And when I stopped imaging in the morning at 8.45 a.m., the EAF Pro was at 59%. Uh, so the actual imaging time since I imaged until about 6.15 uh, a.m. Uh, was nine and a half hours. And during that nine and a half hours, the battery went down at uh, 22%. So that equates to about five and a half nights of eight hours each uh, imaging in winter temperatures. And that's pretty close to ZWO's claim of about seven nights of imaging in warmer uh, room temperature conditions. Here are some of the test images that I, uh, I used the focuser for. So we can flip through. And of course, as you can see, stars are perfectly in focus. I was for refocusing every about two hours, uh, just because, um, uh, well, I was using a small refractor. It's the 60 millimeter FRA 300. So unlike my SCT, I didn't have to refocus quite as often. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, stars are perfect throughout the night. Not a single frame had an issue here. So uh, of course, my little scope and my camera system is well below uh, this focuser's 5 kilogram or 11 pound capacity. So it did an excellent job as expected. Here is the final image after processing. And uh, right over here, you can see the tadpoles. 
And right down here, this is the Flame Nebula. Uh, I mean, it's a focus star after all. There's not a lot we expect from it except to keep our stars in focus. And uh, definitely does a great job at that. So to conclude, I really liked having the physical buttons on the EAF Pro. Uh, I have to refract my focuser all the way in to fit my telescope in the case each time. So when I take the telescope out to start imaging again, I can quickly use the, the built-in focus buttons here to get the focus roughly to where it should be. And then I can really quickly uh, just get the focus accurate enough to let the autofocus take over. Now you might be wondering if you need to spend the extra $100 on the EAF Pro if it's worth it compared to the regular EAFN. Um, I mean, if you don't care about having the physical buttons or the built-in battery or wireless operation, then you can save the $100 and go with the regular EAF in. But for me, I found it was definitely worth the additional cost. I didn't like having to plug in an extra battery into the focuser or over a USB cable for power. And I didn't like having to um, use my remote with just the cable dangling from uh, the telescope uh, when I was, you know, when I was trying to manually focus for visual observing on my C11. So just having the buttons on there is really handy. Um, I do own three other uh, EAFs, just the regular original ones. So for my fourth one, I, I thought um, having one with the built-in buttons so I can use it for visual observing as well would be really handy to have. And if you do decide to buy one of these, be sure to use the links in the description of this video as that helps out this channel at no cost to you. And if you have any questions at all, just feel free to post them in the comments of this video and I'll do my best to reply as soon as I can. Thanks again for watching and clear skies.